everyone. I love hearing the fellowship. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. I think we're going to sing that in a minute. But first, uh, Roy's going to sing How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. We read of a place they call heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truths and God's word he has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fire heaven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. In heaven, no drooping, no pining. No wishing where else were to be. God's light forever does shine. Lord, how beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. For heaven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. The angels so sweetly are singing. Up there by the beautiful sea, sweet chords from their gold hearts are ring. How beautiful heaven must be! How beautiful heaven must be! Sweet home of the happy and free. Heaven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Yeah. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Stand if you want to. You don't have to. Hey, we're going to praise the Lord today, right? Here we go. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leading on the everlasting arm. Secure from all alarms, leading on Jesus, leading on the everlasting arms. Oh, that's my to walk in this pilgrim way, leading on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. to dread, what have I to fear, leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all of
May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Praise to the Lord be God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the, the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus.
saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a blood of life. Glory to his name. Come to the fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge him today and be made complete. Glory to his name. your neighbor's name and then have a seat. So when we get later on in the service and we have our prayer time, you can pray for your neighbor by name. In your bulletins is a connection card. And uh, ask everyone to fill that out. And uh, you can put it back on the table uh, where the communion is. And if you did not pick up your communion as you came in today, uh, feel free to get up and go get that. And that's the place also uh, where you can leave your offering uh, to the Lord. If you're a guest with us here today, feel free to take out your cell phone, yes, here in church, and uh, go uh, put in that phone number and then text hello to that phone number, and you'll get a good greeting from uh, the church there. Uh, just a reminder, uh, today is the last day for the card shower uh, for Debbie Thomas, and the collection, collection box for little gifts is out in the lobby there as well. And then on Saturday, February 18th, we've got our breakfast for dinner. And um, I think we might be doing a movie. Not sure yet. It says dinner and a movie. And it's going to be a fun event. So I think there's a sign-up list out in the lobby for um, uh, food and stuff. All right. So did everybody get a card as you came in today? Not the movie side, but the other side. The elders of the congregation are calling for a special time for the, to the congregation, they're making a call to the congregation to gather together on Wednesday nights, two Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night, <clears throat> because the scriptures are clear. We must pray, and we desperately want a mighty move from the hand of God, and uh, so we want the people of God to come together. Well, we're not going to serve a meal on that night, and uh, so the prayer and fasting. Uh, the call to prayer and fasting, if you don't want to eat just for that meal, that's fine. Uh, if you want to do a 12-hour fast or a 24-hour fast, it's all up to you. Uh, we're not saying, we're just saying we want to be serious about approaching God as a congregation and saying, God, we want your help, and we're calling out to you. For family, for friends, uh, for our culture, a mighty move of God. Then on the other, other side of this card, uh, we're going to have a movie night. Uh, one movie, but two nights, going to split it in half. And uh, I started watching it last night. And I said, I've got to shut this thing off or I'm going to be up, you know, a long, long time. I just, it, it is just so compelling. And uh, so take as many of these cards as you want so you can give out free tickets to people to come and watch this for free. All right, there we go. <coughs> February 25th is the annual D Ladies' Day Away at the Cambria Baptist Church. And then, uh, guess what's happening on February 26th, Sunday, February 26th. You know, how many of you know we're building an empty tomb out there? Okay, you've been driving into church for months now, and you don't, you maybe you didn't see the orange cones. That we're putting in an empty tomb out there. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to take a group picture here in the auditorium. Just have everybody come, take a group picture. We're going to put it in a time capsule. And then when we, uh, when we build the tomb, we're going to stick that uh, time capsule in there. And who knows if anybody will ever see it again? You never know. Maybe Jesus will return and it won't matter anyway. Amen. <laughs> but that's February 26th. And uh, if you haven't picked up your new directory uh, that has all the phone numbers and addresses and all that, uh, they're available in the lobby uh, after church. <clears throat> all right, I believe we have missions moment. Missions moment. Yeah. Good morning. Today's mission moment is for FAME, whom we support, which stands for Fellowship of Associates of Medical Evangelism, and uh, it's worldwide, and we're grateful uh, to support such a mission. I'm going to read you, this is actually to Jerry, this note was, but uh, I'm going to read you something to explain how important it is. Um, this was sent to the director, Bill Warren. In our area, people belonging to other faiths are unwelcoming the evangelists and preachers from the Christian churches. But when we approach them and visit their villages as health providers, they warmly welcome us and accept us to share whatever we have to say and teach them. So by providing medical supplies to these some war-torn war countries, um, they get to preach the gospel at the same time. So they're providing mes medicine in and preaching the gospel. Um, the goal for fame uh, this year, they want to uh, raise $100,000 to be ready as a ministry to continue in all the things that they do, which you can uh, go to their website, fameworld.org. It's in the bulletin. I would encourage you to read the bulletin. There's a lot in there. Thank you very much, Judy, Jeff, and everybody. Um, and and look, we're going to pray for fame right now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the things that you do through the hearts of people, your people, your church. We'd ask, Lord, that there would be much success, continued success with fame, and that you would provide to reach the goal of the $100,000 they're trying to sustain to reach uh, the people that they need to reach. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> i 
few communion thoughts. We are not required to celebrate the Passover meal today because that was a Jewish custom. God has set the old covenant rituals aside, but Jesus instituted something new for us. As he was eating the Passover meal with his disciples on the night before his crucifixion, he took some of the unleavened bread in his hand and said, this is my body, which is given to you. This is from Luke 22, verse 19. Then he took the cup of wine and said, This cup, which is poured out for you in the new covenant, in my blood. And that's verse 20. Now in that moment, Jesus totally redefined the Passover meal. And he invited us to join him in the new celebration. After he shared the bread and wine with his disciples, he gave them some important instructions. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that's from Luke 22, verse 19. So we see in this verse 
that Jesus instructed us to share this bread and wine with each other to remember his sacrifice. The bread represents Jesus' body, which was broken for us. The wine represents his blood, which he spilled to save us. When we partake of the Lord's Supper, it's an act of worship. We express our gratitude to him and honor him for his great love. When we partake of the bread and wine, we are thanking Jesus for the forgiveness and eternal life he gives us. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To me, it's kind of a, a bittersweet time because it's a time that we're remembering, you know, the sacrifice that Jesus gave to us and it was brutal I mean absolutely brutal I know that we will never understand totally what he went through but yet too it's a joyous time because we know what's on the other side of all this and it's it's, he keeps telling us it's going to be worth it but we have to be remaining faithful and that's why we're here today I'm going to say a prayer, and then I will let you partake on your own. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for Jesus Christ. We're so thankful of that suffering that he went through on that cross so that our sins could be washed away, Lord. And, and Father, we do have that promise of eternal life if we do remain faithful. Father, we're thankful for the loaf, and we're thankful for the cup that you have given us to to help us to remember what Jesus did for us. Father, I pray that you would bless us, Lord, from this cup as we do partake. For in Jesus' name. Brian, for online purposes, we need you on the microphone. So, uh, my testimony is this. I'll keep it as brief as I can. I saw something that Debbie put on Facebook quite some time ago now, and she said, something to the effect of we know how God takes care of us right God is good all the time but he protects us but how many times has he protected us when we weren't even aware of it 
Uh, so I'm a part-time DJ. I used to be full-time, but now I'm part-time. I'm, I'm happily semi-retired. And I was asked uh, <laughs> to do a daddy-daughter dance on yesterday, on Saturday. It had been booked for, I don't know, several weeks. But, but I digress. Jeff called me Thursday. We do worship practice on Thursday. He called me and said, hey, because I said, if you need some help moving stuff around, I'll be, ha I'll be happy to do that. And he, he texted me and said, could you come at about 4.30 on Thursday uh, to help me? And I said, absolutely, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, so I had to leave early. Now, generally, no, not generally, always, Tony Smoke is gracious enough to stop and pick me up on the way to worship practice so I don't have to drive. You know, I'm spending his gas money, which is great. Uh, <laughs> but on this day, of course, I had to drive my old 97 Ford van uh, early to, to get here. Well, it broke down on the way. Uh, the alternator went out. Every, all my electrical stuff started dying. But I'm like, what's going on? Uh, but Jeff, we got that figured out. We had my van, uh, got towed back to Union City, and Jeff come pick me up where I was, wet and cold in my van. <laughs> um, but I wasn't upset at all. I mean, I was just like, hey, it's one of those things. This is what happens. Uh, and then I got to thinking on Friday, they, they fixed my van. They got to it like early. Who, who takes their car and gets it immediately serviced? So, but they did. And I'm paying for the service, and it came to my attention. If Jeff, it had nothing to do really with, with Jeff calling and asking me to come early. Because had I not, I never drive anywhere. Uh, I, I'm a homebody. My van never moves. And Tony would have come on Thursday and picked me up like he always does. And my van would have stayed in the garage until Saturday. And it would have broke down on the way to the gig, the daddy-daughter dance on Saturday. And those little girls would have been so disappointed. <laughs> they wouldn't have been able to get somebody to come in there in an hour and get it done. So God knew what was going to happen, and he took care of it. He took care of it. So, God knows what is going on. And that's why we pray for each other by name every week. And uh, there are some significant things happening this week for some of you. Some we know, some we don't know. Just want to highlight, we're praying for Brother Dave uh, Snyder. He's having some surgery tomorrow, some pretty serious surgery. And uh, so we're going to pray for him. And... Uh, and there's some other things. So we, know, we value this time to just right now when we pray for each other, right? We value this. No, your time's up. <laughs> God is so good. Yeah, thank you, Brian. That's so cool. Yeah. All right, so let's pray for each other by name and uh, go to the Lord. Lord, we rejoice in you and we praise your name because you are our omniscient God. You know everything that is going to happen. You have foreknowledge. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for how you provided for Brian uh, this week. And we're all aware in our own lives how uh, that you help us, you provide for us. You're our healer and our redeemer. You're our shepherd. We praise your name 
uh, today, Lord. Uh, as we go and venture into this week, we thank you, uh, Lord, that you have heard uh, the prayers offered on our behalf. And Lord, that, that we know that you will attend to those prayers by faith. And Lord, I pray that even in a greater way, you will give us all a greater zeal for prayer. Uh, two Wednesday nights from now, Lord, that we would hear your call for all of us to gather together, to call on your name in the name of Jesus for one another, for our families, for our friends, for our culture. Lord, that we would have a mighty move of the hand of God. We so desperately need you. We thank you, Lord, that that you are at work. We pray for all of our leaders in high places, especially those, Lord, uh, who seek your face and seek your will. And we pray, Lord, your blessing upon them. And we pray, Lord, for our co-workers in Christ around the world, that today as they enjoy their worship services, Lord, that you hear their prayers and that you... Uh, that your very presence is with them, strengthening, encouraging, and blessing in so many ways. Thank you for our time together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope that you've been taking the reading suggestions for each week, and even if you just read the chapter for one time. I hope you read Philippians chapter 4. Uh, this last week. I hope that you have been encouraged and strengthened and fired up by our uh, study the last five weeks through the third chapter of Philippians. Um, let me tell you, the Spirit has been speaking to the church. Have no doubt. And the Holy Spirit has already spoken to us today. And he, will ha and he will continue. Have no doubt. Don't sit in your seats with unanticipation. Sit in your seats with great anticipation of what God is going to say to us today. As my friend Norm Schooley says, I am blessed, highly favored, much loved, shouting the victory. And I'm on my way to heaven and I can't wait to get there. The key phrase in Philippians chapter 3 is, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And I pray that now that that too is your very passion, more now than it ever has been before. And we're going to take uh, the next few weeks leading up to Easter and studying chapter 4. Not, in this, not study in the sense of uh, I want to know the information. That's low level. I, I want us to study in the sense that I want these teachings, these principles, to be a part, be, be, it changes how I think about life and how I live life. That's where the power of the resurrection comes into play. I want to know the power of Jesus' resurrection living in me so that I am filled and so that you are filled with joy and with the peace and with the contentment that's promised in Philippians 4. Because we will think about the right things and we'll see about God's provision in our lives. Now, you may have noticed that I've titled the message today, The Kind of Church We Want to Be. It's actually the theme for the next few weeks. As we see the practical application of these teachings that Paul was giving to the Philippian Christians, and lo and behold, by God's grace and mercy, he's able to teach us in the 21st century as well. We will see the practical application. I've been saying it for several weeks now. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. What does that mean? Well, our study in chapter 4 is going to show us in where the rubber meets the road. This is what it means to know Christ in the power of his resurrection. Paul told the Ephesian Christians this, that, that you, you are to know that Christ 
will do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. What power is that? Power of the resurrection. To him be glory where? In the church. I love that verse. When we live in the power of the resurrection of Christ, then the glory of Christ will be found in the church and in Christ Jesus forever because we are going to reign with him, right? The kind of church I want us to be is the kind that is becoming more like Jesus and less like us in our humanity. You know, we just don't want to be more like us. As talented and as good looking as some of you are, I don't want to be more like us. I want us to be more like him. Amen. So Paul starts out chapter 4, if you'll get your Bibles, and uh, turn to chapter 4, verse 1. He starts out by encouraging the Philippians by saying, this is who you are. And this is what you're to do. Okay, so who are they? He says, you are my brothers whom I love, whom I long for. And, and if you go back to the end of chapter 2, you'll see exactly what Paul means by that. He is so looking forward to going back and visiting them. And he believes that God is going to grant him that. I don't think it ever happened. Uh, but Paul just sense that God was going to answer that prayer with a yes. But this is what he says. Philippian church, you are my joy and my crown. That's his way of saying, I'm really proud of you guys. I'm really proud of the way that you've been living out your faith in Jesus Christ. It gives me great joy. And when people tell me stories about the Philippian church, oh... It just makes me look good. It's my crown. That's what crowns do, right? It makes you look good, right? You see, the city of Philippi was a crown city for the Romans. In all of Greece, boy, they looked at Philippi. That, 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 that was a great city uh, in Greece. It was a crown city for the Romans. And the church there in Philippi, it was a crown city for Paul. Okay, so that's who they are. So what are they to do? He says this, stand firm in the Lord, friends. It's really a concluding statement to chapter 3. It almost could be, how many verses are there in chapter 3? Those of you who have the Bibles open. 21. This actually could be verse 22 in chapter 3, and the chapter uh, uh, division take place after it. Because it's a concluding statement. Because what Paul is saying is, if you have the attitude of selflessness and you run this Christian life by pressing toward the goal to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, that's how you stand firm in the Lord, by living that way in chapter 3. So, friends here at Northview, isn't that the kind of church that we want to be? A church that thinks that Jesus is worthy of all of our worship and all of our adoration? That Jesus is worth following? No, that Jesus is worth running toward with all your might. I, when we get guests here today, I want people who come here thinking, man, those people are serious about Jesus. You can, you can go to a lot of places, and that's not what's gonna, that's not going to be the impression. But that's the kind of church I want us to be. How about you? Those people are serious about Jesus. And with the construction of our empty tomb, pray that that can happen over the next several weeks. People are going to know we're also serious about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul said, without the resurrection, our faith is useless. And we do, everybody, we point to the cross, and, and rightfully so. But without the resurrection, it was just another death. But Jesus overcame death. I love the song, I love many songs that Andre Crouch wrote. But he, this one, 
Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. And then there's another song. He keeps, he saves, he keeps, he satisfies. So Jesus is worth following. Stand firm in the Lord, church. So verses 2 and 3 points to the second point to the kind of church that we want to be. Paul says, I plead with Eodia and Syntyche, if that's how you say their names, to agree with each other in the Lord. I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, to help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, just like Clement and the other fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life. Evidently, these two ladies were not getting along. And we don't know why. And, and that's good for us to not know why. Um, because the beauty of it is the broad application to all churches. Newsflash. Sometimes people don't get along. Yes. I'm telling you it's true. Sometimes people don't get along. There are always problems and disagreements that happen in a church. How many people are not going to a church today because there was a problem and there was a disagreement there? So they said, the solution is, I'm leaving. The churches, I guess, wouldn't be able to hold all the people that would come if that weren't the case. But Paul says here, find the way to get along. I was hoping Verna would be sitting here today because uh, Don always said, just trying to get along. Just trying to get along. And this is the reason Paul gives. He says we need to, we need to help one another. We need to resolve and solve differences, if at all possible, because this message about Jesus is way too important to get sidetracked. Satan can use those kind of things to get us way off track so that we're not doing what we're called to do. And that is focus on the priority of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. He saves us from our sins. He heals us from our diseases. He strengthens our relationships and helps us to get along. Even people who have been damaged by interpersonal relationships and conflicts. What's his solution? Agree with each other in the Lord. Everybody say that. Agree with each other in the Lord. You may not agree about this circumstance. You may not even come to a solution and see eye to eye on that. But for the sake of the Lord, people, let's agree that he is the most important thing. Amen? That's the kind of church we want to be, to agree with each other in the Lord. In, in Philippians 3.1, Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. Now here in, in Philippians 4, 2, or 3, he says, agree it with each other in the Lord. Now, Paul has personal experience in this, right? He and Barnabas were uh, on their first missionary trip together, and they took young Mark along. And really, early in the trip, it was hard. Missionary trips are always hard. Things happen. And, and he was young, and he was immature, and, and he couldn't take it anymore, and he left, and he went back home. And that really got under Paul's skin. And uh, it was disappointing. So Paul and Barnabas went and started churches throughout Asia Minor, and then they went back uh, to Antioch. A couple of years later, I don't know exactly the timing, but a couple of years later, Paul and Barnabas were talking once again about planning their next missionary trip. And so Barnabas said, being the Christian man that he is, such an encourager, let's take Mark along. And Paul says, no way! And the scripture tells us they had such a sharp disagreement that they, decide, that, that they split up. And Barnabas went one way and he took Mark on a trip. And Saul went 
his way. Paul went his way, and he grabbed Silas and said, let's go. And so Paul and Silas were arrested, and they were beaten, and they were thrown in jail, and they sang and praised the Lord until midnight when God caused an earthquake. Where did that happen? Philippi. Why, Paul wrote a church to Philippi, didn't he? Ah, that's the church we're starting, we're, that we're studying this morning. Ah, this is the one where he personally is talking about how we learn to get along and agree with each other in the Lord. And so now Paul is telling the church this is the best way to function. And when you read the end of 2 Timothy, Paul writes lovingly about Mark and he tells Timothy to bring him because he is helpful to me in my ministry. What does that tell you? What does that one sentence tell you about the relationship about how Paul thought about Mark, about things that possibly could have happened in the past? All of those things. We can, you know, think about a lot of different stories of what would have happened. But essentially it was this. Healing happened because they agreed in the Lord and they actually worked together in ministry later, even though it caused Paul and Barnabas to have such a sharp disagreement that they parted ways for a period of time. The scripture does not pull any punches. Life is hard. And people are challenges. Let's put it that way. People are challenges. But this is the kind of church we want to be. Not one without challenges, but one where people help each other to patch up differences, to find a way to agree in the Lord. And sometimes it always doesn't happen and ways are parted. But the main thing is to keep the cause of the gospel at the forefront like Paul and Barnabas did. And they continued the work of Christ. They just did it with somebody else. And God blessed. God blessed. Others, and, and this is why, there's folks out there, and out there too. I never point that way. Is Union City lost? No, 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 it's not. Let me do that. Out there, okay? There, there's people out there that need to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, right? All right. So let's get along and keep our, our focus on that and not the secondary stuff. Okay, verse 4 is so important. It's a very famous verse. It's a foundational verse for the Christian life. It's pretty short. And it's also absolutely possible because of one reason. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a person's life. And what is that verse? Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. That's right. It is his power that is working in us when we rejoice in the Lord always. Always, if you didn't know, does not mean sometimes. It doesn't mean when things are good only. I know I'm not talking to kindergartners. I really do know that. But it, it really means all the time. And we know that. The, the problem is our circumstances whack us up the side of the head. Our feelings get hurt. We're damaged. And we think, how in the world can I rejoice in the Lord when I'm disheartened, when I'm depressed, when I'm discouraged, when I'm hurting so badly? Well, as I taught six weeks ago, to rejoice in the Lord is not, get this, it is not a happy-go-lucky attitude. It is not, as the song goes, don't worry, be happy, kind of an attitude. It's an attitude that says, I may be in my own jail, like Paul and Silas. I may have been beaten up, bleeding, hurting, but I'm going to praise the Lord in the eye of the storm. 
And at the right time, God will cause an earthquake and get me through it. It's an attitude that says, Jesus, you cruelly suffered through your passion. And I know, that way I know you understand what I'm going through. So I'm going to rejoice in you, Lord, that you are with me. You are right beside me. You promised it. That's what it means to rejoice in the Lord always. That's the kind of church I want us to be. The kind of church that rejoices in the Lord always. That when people are going to come in, and we're going to have new people coming in in the next few weeks, and on Easter Sunday, and following. And you know why we're going to have more new people? Because we're going to have a church that gets serious about saying, God, we want help, and we're going to gather and pray together in the name of Jesus. And God's going to answer our prayers. I believe that. And we're going to rejoice not necessarily because things are good. Things will pop up. But the truth is this. God is good. And we're going to rejoice in him. So the worship team is going to come up. And we're going to sing without him. Let me remind you of the kind of church we want to be. We want to be the kind of church that wants to know Christ. And experience the power of his resurrection on a daily basis. We want to be the kind of church that recognizes that when conflicts happen, we do our best to encourage one another to agree in the Lord and keep the gospel of Jesus Christ the number one priority. And we want to be a church that rejoices in the Lord always. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Let me hear a bigger amen. All of these things are possible when we allow the Lord to grab a hold of our hearts and we grab a hold of him and he changes our attitudes from the inside out. And let me tell you, you do not want to miss next week's message on how to have the peace of God at all times. I'm telling you. And you ought to bring somebody with you too. Pray about that. Let's stand and let's sing without him. And uh, Jerry and uh, Al, if you guys would come up, if you want want these guys to pray for you, something's going on in life, or this week, they're going to come right up here. Just come on up while we're singing, and uh, they will pray for you and with you. Yeah.
unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out for from him and through him and for him are all things to him be the glory forever amen amen, amen. well we're going to walk through this week running towards Jesus and we're going to sing here just a closer walk Roy's going to lead us out here I am weak, but I am strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Granted, Jesus is my way. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Daily walking close to thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Stores and sneers. If I find Lord who cares, who will be my burden share? None but thee, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Granted, Jesus is my Just a closer walk. Daily walking close to thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Stop playing.
everybody. Have a great week. <laughs>